Okay, can everybody hear me okay? All right, everybody awake? Sort of, maybe, yes, maybe now. Uh, my name is, uh, so this session is getting the most out of Omega. Uh, I'm Zakia. I'm from San Diego. Uh, Sage Tree Solutions, uh, we're a development sh shop uh, in downtown San Diego. Um, this is an extension of a talk I gave at Sand Camp um, in the spring, and I thought I'd develop more on it and do um, um, some more advanced ideas. Um, I wanted to start by just asking if there was like any specific questions that someone had answered during this time because it's a pretty broad topic um, and I could start with very basic things or very advanced things. Yeah? I was just wondering if you could cover things to keep the theme efficient. Okay. Not so heavy. Okay, I think I... If there's little tweaks that you can do to make it less heavy. Um, I don't know if I'll quite answer that question, but I, I'm very much in favor of less code. So hopefully that'll um, help with that. Um, so uh, we're going to cover the uh, sort of basics of Omega and go over them, and then um, talk about a little more advanced things like looking at some code and sort of um, the things that aren't so much documented in um, some of the tutorials on Omega. And then um, I was going to do um, some like code examples, like, um, like pre-processed functions and things, but there's a whole session on that tomorrow, and there's also a session on responsive theming. I was going to talk about adaptive images. So someone suggested that I do SAS. Um, so I guess if I did SAS at the end, would anyone be like really disappointed if we have time? Anyone be like upset? Okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so um, I'll put the um, there's a link to uh, the the code I'll be talking about in the slides at on the DCLA session page. Um, and I just wanted to get a sense of the room. So how many people in here regular Drupal users using it all the time? Um, uh, regular Omega users, a little less, um, touched Omega in some way, shape, or form, okay, hated Omega, no, <laughs> that's to be understood. Um, um, so um, uh, site builders, uh, people who consider themselves themers, a little less, um, straight up developers, don't usually touch the, okay. And um, does anyone know Drush in here? Because I can save a lot of time if I just talk about things in Drush terms. Okay, so anybody not know Drush at all? Okay, I'll try to be um, responsive to all users. Um, I apologize for my slide pictures. Given one more day, they would have been really clever and interesting. Um, so we're going to start with the basics. Um, there's uh, Drupal.org um, in the last like six months or so has started, um, people have been putting up uh, a pretty uh, good handbook on Omega, so a lot of this stuff is in there that I'll go over in the beginning. Um, these are the modules that are sort of, using Omega without these five modules, I think um, you, you miss out on a lot. Um, Omega Tools is just sort of um, a handful of like just little helper uh, things that you can do. Um, Delta is a layout manager, I'll talk about that more later. Context will allow you it, that you should be familiar with context. It's a replacement for the block overview page, um, you know, the placement of blocks on the page. Um, CTools is another help, helper uh, module, and uh, features will allow you to keep as much as possible in code, which um, will allow you to track things and, uh, and collaborate better and all that. Um, so I'm not going to go over the, the uh, ins and outs of sub-theming. Again, Drupal.org has a good thing on that. Um, so, for those who, you know, don't know, when you are looking at a, uh, when you, whenever you're creating a um, theme, your own theme for Drupal, you should probably never, I, I can't think of a use case unless maybe you're just in the, um, in the uh, wireframing stage of a site where you would use just the pure code that you um, download from Drupal.org, you always want to use, um, create your own sub-theme based on the original theme. Um, and like I said, there's instructions on that. Um, one thing in, uh, in Omega is, uh, with Omega tools, is you can actually create a sub-theme on the fly. Um, so I'm in my Drupal site right now in the code. Um, but um, you can create a sub-theme using Drush. So you can do Drush Omega. You can slide that over so you can see the whole thing. 
Josh Omega Tools, and um, name of a theme. Let's call it my theme because that's what my slides say. And it'll wait a second. Oh, what? Oh, it's so much fun to do demos. Um, let me check my see my site's working. Well, I'll show you the other method. That does work, but uh, I won't waste too much time on it. Um, you can also... Uh, no, it should be a mega sub theme. Is that what I, t is that what I typed? Oh, so, yeah. It should be Drush Omega sub theme. And then the, whatever you want to name your theme. We'll see if it works this time. So it's, it says it create, uh, successfully created my theme. Um, so if I look at my uh, source code here, you can, is that big enough? That is not big enough on the side. I don't know how to make the sides bigger. Um, but you can sort of, uh, I'll use uh, Finder. So this is my Drupal 7 site. Um, if I look at my themes folder, it created a, uh, a, a theme called uh, my theme in um, you know the themes folder. Um, I always move it into custom because it is a custom theme. And um, it's that simple. It gives you folders to hold your preprocessors and everything. You can also do that through the um, uh, user interface. Uh, it, there's a link right there, create an Omega sub-theme. It'll take you through the steps in order to do it. So if you've ever created your own sub-theme, mm -hmm. that's just one nice little handy thing that you can do with Omega tools. Back to Keynote. Um, let's see. Um, just to... <coughs> Okay, so um, looking inside Omega, um, on your appearance page, like you would with any theme, you have a bunch of settings. Um, you have eyes, so you can go through and check and see all the things you can do. Um, uh, let me look at the actual Omega one. Well, this one is modified. This is the one I, I did for this uh, presentation, um, but it has the same options. You'll notice I'll explain why the zone and re region configuration is kind of light there, um, but you can set your grid settings, uh, turn on, on and off debugging things. If you've opened up Omega, you've seen this all before. You know um, where everything is, um, and it gives you a lot of power to do everything right in the um, um, UI. Um, what I... Um, I'm learning to really appreciate about Omega is that all those settings are available um, in your uh, .info file. So um, I'll look at the my uh, theme, the one I just created. It, when it generates my .info file, it's got um, sort of, you know, it's pretty massive, all this um, stuff that's in here. Um, but you can see it all corresponds directly to what's on that um, settings page. So everything from turning on and off your debug blocks, you can, um, you know, set it to zero right here, and then it turns it off. You can change your roles. Um, you can, um, and I'll go more into this later, change the, uh, the assignments of zones, regions, et cetera, um, all in the .info file. And um, instead of toggling through and sort of creating it. And once it's in a .info file, if you have a sort of standard that you always use, you can reuse that from site to site. Um, and also, if, um, you know, someone else is using the site, I won't say messing with, <laughs> um, you can always revert, if you're using the mega tools, you can always revert the settings back to the original, um, what you have in your .info. So, um, for an example, I'm in my custom theme, um, I will turn off responsive. Let's just do that. And so just so you can see, um, 
It does. Uh, I've got uh, CSS in this. This is a custom theme based on Omega that's on here right now. But you can see it's responsive as I move the browse as I move my browser size. The CSS changes. Um, the um, so if I wanted to turn that off, I would go to my my theme, which is the DCLA theme. That's the one that I pre-made before tonight today. Um, Where is my dot info? I'd go to my dot info file, and this one's uh, this is what I put up on. Um, uh, it's actually on. It's hosted on the Sage Tree site, but there's a link to it through the DCLA site. Um, I, I just the way it spits out when you make it a mega sub theme is way too much just dense code, so it's a little spaced out better. Um, so I use this as my basis. But um, let's say I want to turn off responsive. I just turn it to zero. Cancel that. Um, and I'm going to flush the cache because that'll make it uh, look back at the uh, .info file. You can do revert theme settings or you can flush the cache. Usually both work pretty equally. Um, and so, uh, let's see. I might have to do it the right way. Well, that's good news. Nope, still working. Well, I guess you're going to have to trust me, or else I could spend a really long time just trying to figure out why that's not working. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's the, it's the grid is, yeah, because um, the... The CSS is set um, in a different way uh, as opposed to the setting actually in there. Thank you for noticing. See? It worked. So it's keeping the whole grid size. Um, okay, what's next? Um, so that's sort of one fun thing. Um, so the way I work with Omega, was, which I feel has... Um, made it a little easier to deal with some of the sort of, um, did someone have a question? Did I see your hand? No. Okay. Uh, uh, some of the, to use it to its, its fullest extent, um, I actually disable all the blocks in the block overview page. So the normal structure blocks that you usually, when you first start using Drupal, you would use to assign all the different pieces. I disable all the blocks there for, for uh, convenience. And I use um, context only. Um, so in this case, you'll see I've got one default um, context. And it just assigns the, um, the main content and the two sidebars. In Drupal 7, because your main content is actually a block, you can move it around just like you would any other block and use it in context like any other block. You can move your sidebars around like any other block. Um, in this particular theme, I just have, um, I just put in, um, I, I just have one, uh, three regions um, for the sake of this demo. Um, um, but um, I just wanted to show that part that uh, uh, I, I, I use the um, I use context to set all my blocks, including logos, uh, main menus, etc. Um, because if you use delta blocks, you get a you get all these sort of pieces that sort of live in your theme in your in your page.tpl.php that are, um, you know, Drupal usually controls and decides where they're going to be, or you have to edit that template file in order to figure out where they are. Um, Delta blocks lets you just put it in a block. Um, for those who are used to Drupal 6 theming, you would know that, um, that uh, you know, um, typically your page.php would have all that stuff, and you would just go in and edit it if you want to move things around. With Delta blocks, I feel like it's a lot more, um, I have a lot more control that I can just stick it anywhere. Um, um, so, like I said, I disable logo, slides, slide, site slogan, etc., on the admin appearance settings page, um, and I use Delta blocks. Let's see what's, um, so, just to actually show it in motion. Um, wait, what's my order? Trying really hard not to go out of order. I tend to just sort of go down a path when I have a thought and not cover everything. 
Okay, so uh, what I'll do is I'll show you, um, uh, we'll create a new region and uh, No, we won't. <laughs> um, let's look at layouts first. Um, so this is another sort of basic thing that you can find in a lot of um, a uh, Drupal, um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the articles that are written about uh, Omega and a lot of the talks that have happened already talk about Delta. Um, so I just wanted to cover this other part. Uh, I'm going to switch this to a regular theme so it's a little more dramatic. That's not what I want to do. Um, I'm going to use the my theme, which was made out of the um, out of just the regular uh, sub theming process, the automatic sub theming process. So back to a normal theme with a logo and everything. All the the debugging stuff is on right now. Um, uh, with Delta, uh, how many people have used Delta before? Okay, good. I'll be showing you something new. Yay. Um, so Delta is a helper module. Um, we're using Omega version 3 right now. Um, in 4, um, uh, it's been said that uh, Delta will be rolled into Omega. Um, that's all sort of, you know, peripheral knowledge. So if, you, if in a year you start looking at this and it changes, that's why. Um, but uh, so what Delta does is it creates um, additional layouts. So let's say um, on your website, uh, most of your pages um, have a header, a footer, and three columns. But on some pages, you've got a special landing page, or maybe your home page. You want a completely different layout. You want like you know four equal even blocks. This is where Delta can really help you out. Um, so I'm going to add a new Delta template. Um, I'm going to call it um, different. As you can see, I already tested this, tried the same method before. Um, just so you know, there's a bug in it where um, it, said, it gives you this, op this option of only override different, override different values or override all values. Um, it doesn't really work properly. Um, so just for the sake of just knowing what you're doing, I always choose override all values so I don't get confused when, um, when other people are looking at it, they know what it's doing. Um, so, um, I'm going to save it. Um, so what it gives me now is I've got this new layout, um, and I always think of deltas as layouts. Um, and I'm going to configure this new layout. Um, I'm going to use the default grid. Um, and in this case, wait, sorry that it built it on the wrong theme. Uh, I'm going to edit it. No. I'm just going to add a new one. New layout. So um, it should be based on my theme, not the DCLA theme, and so I can show this all better. Uh, parent template, you can, um, in theory, like I said, this is not all like completely cooked. Uh, you would be able to have one base template and then just save the changes. That hasn't seemed to work. That hasn't worked for me ever. Um, so uh, I always do just do the override all values and think of it that way. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and configure my new layout. I'm going to uh, um, let's say I. I'm just going to disable the whole middle because that'll be dramatic, right? Wait. Um, so I'm going to take the content zone, which is the whole middle, both sidebars. Uh, I'm going to uh, just assign it to the section of none so it doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to save it. But I see no difference because I haven't actually applied that layout to any part of my site. It just exists as, you know, a database, a bunch of database settings. It doesn't actually, um, Drupal doesn't know what to do with it yet. So that's where context comes in. Um, so I can use context, like uh, hopefully everyone's familiar with it. Uh, context is um, a, uh, a way to decide what's happening with your site based on the context. So like you, you have a number of conditions in this case. Let's go with the path of um, 
we'll just do the front page. And I'm going to change my reaction um, to a delta of new layout. So on the front page, we'll want you to, we want you to use a different layout on the front page. Save it. Now this is my front page. As you can see, I've got no middle content. I've got no middle section. Um, so a lot of times maybe you don't want that river of nodes on the front page, whatever. So I have a new layout on the front page. My other pages still have that middle content. Um, when it gets really exciting when you use, I don't know if exciting is the right word, exciting for me, um, <laughs> when you use it with features. Um, how many people use features regularly? Ooh, we got to get everybody using features. Well, for some cases. I really like features for context, views, and delta. Um, I, I, it, it, there are issues with sort of other things in collaboration and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to create a feature called um, Z's layouts. Uh, features are a way to store your configuration settings into code. The, at one time, it was the idea was that features would be a way, like you could package all your blogs to get, like you could make a feature called blog and you could like enable it and it would work like a module and then all of a sudden you'd magically have a blog on your site and you see this with a lot of distributions and things. Um, what I, I think the actual use case that people are using it for is just to save all their configuration, all the clicking you do in Drupal to find this and that and put it all into code so that it can be managed in a, re, in a, in a Git repository and, um, uh, and, and whatnot. Um, so this is um, my layouts. Um, this is a 7.x. Uh, I'm going to add delta uh, of um, new layout. I'm just going to add the new layout one. I'm going to download my feature. So I've got my, wait, that's from last night. That's not that new one. Oops. Things everywhere. I am not logged in, so what is happening? <coughs> What's my username? I do not know how it logged me out. Um, give me one second. I apologize. Uh, okay. Does anyone have any questions? Am I going too fast, too slow? Just right. Everybody have a nice lunch. Mm -hmm. Does so anyone remember the drush command for um, resetting a user password? What is it? And do you have to put in the password there, or do you have to, or does it send you a login request?
This is exciting, huh, guys? Uh... Where is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Do I have to put in my user? Yeah. So am I putting in the user before? Yes. Sorry. Thank you for your help. Okay, what was I doing? I was creating a feature. Uh, let's do that again. Z's layouts. And I'm adding a delta to it. And I'm downloading it. I'm crossing my fingers. There we go. So um, for those not familiar with features, um, what it does, what it did is it gave me basically a little mini module uh, into my downloads folder. Um, I'm going to drop this into, just so you can see the um, full directory um, path. You go sites, all, modules, and then I created a separate folder for features. All my contributed modules are in this, this other uh, folder. Um, so uh, if you're... So, in, well, actually, I think it is really important to look in it. Um, if we look at the source code for um, the feature itself, um, you can see the delta file. Well, let, let's look at the .info first. So the .info just initializes the module, just like any other module tells what the dependencies are. Um, the module file is just like include other things. Um, <coughs> The features, you don't really worry about that so much if you're a themer. Um, but if you look at the Delta Layouts um, uh, file, you pretty much have a repeat of your .info file. Like you can see it's got the same stuff, like what's my alpha grid, what's my, is, am I responsive or not, um, setting widths, heights, etc. not widths, um, what your responsive thing is, and all that good stuff can be changed in here. So if you, do, if you have multiple layouts on your site, and say you have to make a change across all layouts, you can just go into your Delta, find them, make the changes, uh, drush CC all, or clear, clear all your caches, and the changes are made there instead of going through and clicking through, you know, a million pages. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so uh, that is layouts and features. Um, so now, uh, let's look under the hood a little bit of the Omega theme. So let's just look at Omega itself. Sorry, the, the little thing is really small. Um, so I'm clicking on, so I'm inside sites, all themes. Um, I'm in, in my contrib folder, Omega. Um, You'll see there's three uh, folders inside the Omega folder. So you download the Omega package from Drupal.org. You get three uh, folders. Uh, the first one is called Alpha. Alpha contains all your grid, and it's sort of like the basic building box of Omega. Um, and then the Omega theme it is actually just a modification of Alpha. So Omega is actually a sub-theme of Alpha. Um, Let's go to the slides. So here we are. Um, so Omega overrides the markup for specific reasons and zones. Um, for example, if we look at the page.tpl.php that is in um, o um, Omega, and you know the pay the the um, those familiar with Drupal 7, usually your, your, your TPL files are like super huge. They've got all this stuff in them. They've got their logo, site blocks, whatever. Uh, alpha is sort of like this. It's just these building blocks. It's these, um, 
everything exists as one of four things. It's either a section, a zone, a region, and then inside the, those regions is where you put the traditional Drupal blocks, either using context or the block system. Um, and of course, that counts for beans and boxes as well. Um, the reason, what part of the reason why I use um, Delta blocks instead of using like an actual like logo is because I can put everything into one of these sections and then those sections are modified. Um, so if you look at the, um, at the, what's actually inside your templates file for alpha, the, and again, this one is the basic building blocks, it has those same things. It's got a section, which ha it just prints content. It's got a zone, it's got a region, um, and it's got a block. The HTML, of course, is the, is the wrapper, and the page is sort of the, the page. Um, and then the Omega theme, what the Omega theme is trying to do with its templates is make them more specific. So for example, it's the same, the, the, it's going to modify the region.tpl.php for the sidebar first region um, with just changing the markup a little bit. So it's got asides instead of divs, right? Um, if you look at the content that page.tpl.php, um, so for the re for the content region, right, um, it's overriding the regular region template that from Alpha and Omega saying, in your in my content area, I want to do special things. I want to have a title. Um, I want to have tabs. I want to have action links, and I want to have feed icons as well as the. Um, actual content, which is somewhere in here. Yeah. Um, there it is, print content. Um, the, um, um, and again, with the menus, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so um, that's kind of just what's happening in there. I know a lot of people, especially developers, are like, where is everything? That's, that's kind of what's happening between Alpha and Omega. Um, Okay, so we talked about the, oh, there's one good, I have a link for the, this one right here. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the Omega CSS. If you know how to write CSS, you can see the, you know, you can see the markup, you can see the CSS. But if you want a little more help, this link is kind of a good one that explains this section, zone, region, block of it all. Um, so I'm going to show you how to add new zones and regions um, in this, in my .info file that I am demonstrating to you all right now. If I can stay in the right window. Um, of my custom theme that I made in advance, not the one that was generated by um, the, uh, Omega Tools. I've limited this to just... Um, three regions inside one zone. Um, Miss slide. Okay, so I've got one zone. It's called content. And I've got three regions. Content, sidebar first, and sidebar second. Um, I'm not going to worry about the style sheet so much right now. Blah, blah, blah. And then um, down here is where I make... Um, settings, uh, and this is all, you'll, you'll see the duplicate of this in, if you do a Omega sub theme, you, you'll see the exact same thing, and it's nice and long, and it's got like a million things, it's got like, the, I think Omega comes with like 16 uh, regions or something, and like eight zones. Um, I wanted to simplify it just to explain the concept, so hopefully that makes sense to people. Um, I actually, you know, I think what will make more sense is I'm going to create a new zone, um, and a new region. And um, going back to my custom theme. Actually, no, let's look at this theme. Um, you can see uh, that um, each one of these blocks represents a region. Like these debugging blocks, they're not actual blocks, they're debugging blocks. So they're saying this is the user bar first region, the user bar second region. Et cetera, et cetera, menu region, header first, and you put blocks inside all of those. Um, if you go to the settings page of that, you can see that you can put um, 
each, each region belongs inside a zone. So sidebar for these three regions, sidebar first, content, sidebar second, go inside the zone. Think of the zone as the thing that goes all the way across the page. If you're looking at um, a design, uh, if designers provided a design for you, um, anything that's going to go all the way across the page, like any color that, you know, like anything that's like the whole width, think of that as a zone. Anything that's going to be like a certain number of columns wide, that's a, that's a region. So um, if, mm, let's just, let's look at DCLA. Uh, so like for this, this whole area where this, all this blue, I would put, I would put all that, I put this blue in one zone, this, and that would be like the user bar area, user zone. Um, and I would make this its own zone, this uh, branding, it's probably in the branding area. Then this would all be the content zone, and this would be my footer zone, and this I would be like closure or subfooter or something like that. And then the regions within it would be this area, like where site credits is, where platinum sponsor is. Travel would be a region and this info area. And maybe I'd call them footer one, two, three, four. Um, so um, going back to my basic theme. Wow, time flies. Um, going to go back to setting as default the theme that I have. Mind you what it looks like for everyone's sake. Let's turn the responsive back on because that's where the fun happens. I am, wow, I'm so far behind. Um, Turning responsive back on. Okay, my grid's bouncing again. Um, the uh, so if I wanted to create a brand new region, like I said, this or brand new zone, this uh, particular site has only one zone. This theme has only one zone. If I want to um, create a new one, all I do is copy what already exists. And if you look at the Omega subtheme, it's got you know 12 zones. They're all listed the same way. You just give it a different name. I'm going to call mine new stuff. I don't. Do yourself a favor. Don't use the word zone, region, content, or section in any Thing you name yourself because <laughs> it'll just drive you insane. Like you can actually have CSS that has the word content in it six times and it's totally valid and totally like matters. Um, so I give it a human name and a machine name. Um, if I flush my cache. Um, and I look at my appearance settings again, and I'm in the right thing. So I've got this new stuff zone that I've created. Um, I'm going to now do stuff with it, because right now it doesn't live on the web, it's just, it. It exists, we, we can, but Drupal doesn't know what to do with it. Alpha and Omega don't know what to do with it. Um, so what I would then do is you can sort of, if you look through the CSS, you can see these stanzas of settings. Um, and this one is for the content zone. So I'm just going to copy that stanza. And I'm gonna, just going to change the word content to new zone because that's the name of my... Uh, new zone, or what did I call it? New stuff. See, I'm not even listening to my own directions. Uh, 
And the one, the thing with this that matters the most is what section you're assigning it to. Um, in this case, we're going to assign it to, there's only three sections. There will always only be six, three sections. You never need to add new sections to the site. It's either header, content, or footer. I'm going to put this one in header. Um, uh, flush again. Fresh. So in region, I've now assigned that to a zone. It now needs regions to go in it. Um, if I want to make a new region, I'll only make one because we're short on time. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. As you can see, each stanza, I've got a stanza for sidebar first. You can see the word sidebar first in each one of these. One for content, one for sidebar second. I'm just going to create another one. And um, I'm not going into detail, but, you know, they're pretty well named, like equal heights. Like that's if you want to turn, change it to one if you want to use equal heights for, the, for that equal height, like um, blocks with equal heights to be inside of that. Um, if you want to uh, force it to render whether, whether or not you actually have content in it. Uh, if you want to give it extra columns before and after it, you can, um, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to add it just its own random CSS class. Um, so I'm going to call this region, um, we'll just call it DCLA. Oops, I forgot to add, initialize it first. So I'm just going to Oh, and I see people, I can understand why after eight hours of um, sitting in rooms, um, you would want to go. Um, I did what I had planned to do a whole thing on building your own custom grid. So like a grid that was, um, that's either bigger than 960, has a different gutter, has a different column, you know, number of columns. Um, all the instructions are in the slides and I, and, um, I also have the, the, the layout for it. I, um, um, there, and and um, instructions and stuff. So if that was something you were interested in or waiting for, I'd be happy to talk to you about it afterwards, or you can look at the stuff, but I'm really going to run out of time here. And I apologize for that. Um, so I'm going to flush my caches. Um, for those who said they don't use Drush, that's the same as doing clear all caches in the browser. Um, I've got a new, uh, I don't have a new region. I'm just, huh? Oh, I didn't see. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I have to assign it to a zone. So new stuff is my zone. If you're adding multiple, if you want to add a whole bunch of, uh, different um, regions, like say you're ad adding like four or five, um, and you want to weigh them differently, you just change the weight. That's also pretty valuable. The weight variable is is on zones and things too, so you can like make your footer at the top in one place, make your footer at the bottom in another. And also when you're using delta, you can then, you know, just edit it right there in delta instead of like dragging and dropping all your little madness. What I miss? Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, so saved. Flush all caches. Okay. Do my settings. Let's see if it happened in the regions. Oh, there's my new region. And if I look at my actual site and I turn on my debugging blocks, here's my new region. Oh, it's only, what, five? column width or whatever, I'm going to go back in. And, 
and I'll make it, um, this is an 18 column grid, so I'm going to make this 18 so it fills the whole top. Uh, clear my cache again. If you get, um, when you're working with this, I still haven't figured out the clue. Sometimes the Drush CC all works fine every time. Sometimes clearing the cache through the browser works every time. Sometimes the uh, revert all appearance settings will work. And sometimes none of them work. I really haven't figured it out. Been working with Drupal for, for five years. Still uh, a little clueless on that one. So I'm trying different methods as I work on this. Um, oh, yeah. So let's refresh. Um, and I look at my blocks. And now it's the full width. So you can see how that saves you time with CSS and like exact positioning. And if you're using a grid layout, like there's a lot of, like just being able to do so much in one file and one piece of, you know, I find it, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons not to use Omega, but that, these are some of the things that I think are a real benefit. Um, so it's 545. I was supposed to end at 550. Um, I can talk forever. I just want to make sure um, I at least acknowledge the other things I had intended to talk to, talk about, and then um, I can keep going and answer questions as long as there are people in the room. Um, so I talked about regions and zones. So custom grids, these are the reasons why you would want to use one. Um, uh, and there are these instructions, I, I need to go through this wiki and make sure, I think that the wiki has some mistakes in it. Um, that's why I wanted to you know, make sure I did this. I need to go through like line by line and make sure, because um, I had followed the, the wiki the original time, the first time I did it, and it didn't work, and then I found other um, things. Um, and hopefully I'll, you know, maybe I'll contribute to it. Um, follow my instructions, it'll be perfect. Um, so just to talk about it quickly, um, if you are making your new the um, a new grid of your own, these are kind of the steps. Um, again, you're, you're editing, the, it's all happening in the .info file for the most part. You're telling the .info file what to look for, and then Omega slash Alpha does its magic and it just finds your CSS files. Um, wait, maybe I should back up a second and just, um, in the responsive of it all, um, what responsive themes do, what, what, what Omega does out of the box is it has four CSS files. One of them is this global CSS. I think of it as the boss CSS, like, at, like it's got two S's in it. CSS has two S's. It always rules. It's the boss. Um, uh, and then you have four sort of layout ones, and they change based on the width of your media query. Um, and there's going to be more on responsive tomorrow with uh, Rob. Um, so in this case, um, every time I change my window, it's looking for a new grid. So it's looking, it's looking for this 18-column grid, um, and it's going, uh, uh, and it's changing the width of the sidebars based on what my, uh, the size of my window is. This is sort of the basics of uh, responsive theming. Um, and so in my case, I'm on a different grid. Um, so these are my settings. My what I'm, uh, I'm telling it to look for a wide, a normal, and a narrow layout. I could add 18 layouts. I could say like, I want a horizontal and a vertical one, and a, you know whatever, whatever. You, if you can make a media query for it, you know you want to make it like different every three pixel change. You can. Um, you can add as many layouts as you want. You can add as many column choices. So like you could have because with Omega you can actually have multiple grids on the same page. So you could actually say, I want this section to be divided into 18 columns. I want this section only to be divided into three. I want this section to be nine. And you can initialize those as well. Um, I have not found a use case for that, but <laughs> you can do it. Um, uh, again, there's more changing to, this, to the .info file. And I, I'm, again, I posted the .info file. And then the one thing that um, I, this is the thing I think is wrong in the wiki that I need to do more investigation in is that the wiki seems to assume that um, Omega is going to find the uh, CSS files that are automatically generated, like by your sub theme. Your sub theme makes these, you know, CSS files that have certain names. It doesn't find them. Um, you have to specifically declare the style sheets like you would for any other theme. Um, this is different from the grid. The grid is just the like, you know, this is the width of each column. This is the. I'll show you a grid page. 
<sighs> so um, the grid files are just, they're defining like your 960 or whatever your, the width of your, your grid is. And all it is is just, you know, 60 pixels. All the, it's just pixel widths the whole way through. So your, how big you want everything to be. And that's it. There's no like styles, there's no colors or anything like that. That's the grid. Omega or alpha will find your, um, your grid files if you name them correctly, follow the instructions either in, the, in this slideshow or in, on, on Drupal.org. Um, it'll find the grids. It won't find your CSS files. You just your regular like defining the styles, what your colors, um, where your images are, CSS files. Um, and those you have to declare specifically. And you want to make sure that the media query that you're using matches the media. Well, you don't have to. I mean, you can make it anything you want. But theoretically, if you want, if you're changing based on the grid, you probably also want to um, change your style based on the grid. Um, so uh, you have to define them just like you would any other style sheets in a .info file for any other theme. Um, and you can give them any name. Um, and I have a note here. Note that these aren't smart file names, and the media query should match your alpha layouts, my theme settings. Um, then you make the actual grid files. You do your math. Um, you have to make a little ping for each one if you want to actually see like the change, which is pretty. Um, so yes, changes in the CSS file. Um, make your own ping. Always clear your cache when you're working with the .info file. Um, that's the hugest mistake. Uh, uh, one of our uh, themers has a big sign on his desk that just says clear cache because <laughs> so many times that we've, you know, it's happened more than once that clearing the cache solved the problem. Um, just one little tip I just wanted to throw in there just to make sure people were aware. Um, the, so when you look at the actual markup for a, uh, when you're looking at, uh, I need to make the window wide enough. I don't know if this screen's going to be big enough for me to pull this off. Uh, no. Um, if I can remember how to change, don't dock to the right. Yes. Um, so, uh, can I make this any bigger? When you look at um, the C the markup for these, um, you know, any any really any theme that's using a grid system, um, you see these grid fives, grid eights, whatever. Um, I've I've had the tendency, and I've seen other people have the tendency to try to put like if you're just making like a panel, for instance, and give it its own. You want to put that grid inside a grid. Um, you never want to put a grid uh, div or a side or whatever container inside another uh, another object that has a grid class. You want to put it always inside the container, something that has a container. If you put a grid inside a grid, it will uh, the margins will double and then it'll just look broken and you'll be sad. Um, so that's just one little thing I wanted to point out. Also. Um, borders will also break your grid um, because that one extra pixel that makes the border will then throw off all the math. Um, so you always want to apply borders to like inners, like most, just about every thing that's put out with Drupal markup will have an inner. Uh, uh, so you have your region and then your region inner. You always want to apply any margins, any padding, any border to the inner and then like let everything else work itself out. If you start touching the the grid, the, anything that's actually defined as the grid, then that's when like it's like ah, I hate this. Grids are stupid. Um, slideshow. Let's see. It's definitely not time to talk about SAS. I love it. You should learn it, use it. Um, SAS. Uh, SAS. Oh, well, maybe I'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, SAS is um, another, a better way to write, write CSS. Um, I'll just show you a quick example of this. Um, so um, this is my global.css. You notice that I have, um, so I have these variables like dark blue and I gave it a, a definition 
And then with SAS, uh, when I actually want to use dark blue inside my CSS, I just say dark blue. Um, and there are, that is just one of like four or five really awesome make CSS easier to write tricks that you can use with SAS. Go to, uh, you do need, there's a little bit of um, back end kind of stuff that you need to do to use it, um, but it, not really. Um, you just have to know, you have to have Ruby running in order to compile. The SAS has to be compiled. The, um, your site won't look straight at the SAS. It'll look at the, the uh, uh, CSS version at the end. Um, and um, uh, sas-lang.com, uh, I think. If you just Google SAS, they have all the instructions there. It takes two seconds to set up. You will love writing CSS after that. The and CSS is actually outside. It's a CSS preprocessor outside of Google. Right, right. You can use it with any site. It's not Drupal specific at all. Uh, there, there are some modules that have been made to use SAS with Drupal. Um, I think Compass is one. I haven't used any of them because I started using it the way it was described on the thing and was really happy for it. And just one other, if you leave with nothing else, this is 888 lines of SAS and the compiled version is... <laughs> Oh, sorry. I got that back. Oh, well, because they shrink the uh, it, it shrinks the CSS, so it's actually less lines. But <laughs> it's easier to write, and it's more fun to write. <laughs> it's sane. It's sanity. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think there's so two modules to check out. The responsive images module is now working. So that, if you've ever been dealing with responsive, the big problem is that, like, if you have an image that's this big and you feed it to a website or a, a device that's super small, you're still getting this really big image no matter how great your CSS is. The only thing you can do is shrink it, like, make it 100%, but you still have a file that that's, that's that big that's coming into your, onto that browser. The responsive images module solves that problem, and it's a really big deal. I'm very excited about it. Um, the other uh, module that I'm excited about is uh, RHEL, which uh, makes you, it totally blows up your, uh, your forms, like you can do anything you want. You can have like multiple submit buttons, every, anything wherever you want it. Um, although it is in development, um, uh, I wouldn't use it on anything production yet, but I hope it, hope it gets the um, attention it needs so that it can, because uh, I think it'll make things way easier. Um, okay, three minutes. Last slide, I think. One more slide. Two more slides. Uh, so just final thoughts. Uh, people have been asking about mobile tools. It's not ready for Drupal 7 yet, so can't use mobile tools with Omega. It would be awesome if you could, because then you could, uh, in, your in your context, say, like, if the device is mobile, disable this region. You know, Then you can like, have your deltas respond to the mobile state, not just to the media query. Um, but it's not ready yet. Um, two, uh, just good advice, never build your site to match your comps, always make your comps match what you've built, um, especially when you're dealing with Omega. If you try to lay a grid, if you try to gridize something that's already been made without a grid in mind, a, a comp that's already been made without a grid, grid in mind, you're just going to go insane. Um, Omega comes with grid-based layouts for panels, which is nice. They've come with their plugins for panels, so that's cool. Um, and then just one thing that always, that happens to people a lot when they're working with the Mega is that your debugging blocks, like the blocks that I can turn on and off uh, with the little button, they're going to exist as long as you have debugging turned on. So if you, you know, like I, you know, we've had people um, try to go and like create a new layout to get rid of this like, you know, phantom sidebar or something. It's like, no, just turn off debugging. It works fine. The sidebars expand and collapse, and the, with the, the content area expands and collapse as it's supposed to. Just your debugging blocks are getting in the way. Um, and finally, um, let me know if you have any questions. If I talk too fast, if I was horrible, um, you can find me on Twitter, although I don't really tweet anything. But I will respond to you if you send me something. Um, I'm also on Drupal.org as Zakia. Um, feel free to talk to me during the fiesta afterwards, and thanks for listening to me talk for 59 minutes. Question! <laughs>
I'm sorry? I think people theoretically bash Omega due to, because uh, you, you see a lot of code and people think, oh, it must be heavy. But if you actually, um, I think it's faster than Fusion ever was. It'll never, I mean, it's not as fast as like, you know, just running, um, um, you know, like your own custom theme that has like three pieces, you know, three variables or something like that. Um, um, but if you use your performance settings the way you're supposed to, you don't see it. I don't, you do not, it's, Drupal 7 is so much faster than Drupal 6 alone that I feel like any complaints about Omega and performance are kind of, you know, overblown compared to what you actually experience. Yeah. I think you want to lose some of your subtweet, right? Because you actually have an alpha thing and an Omega thing, and you're subtweeting that, so mm -hmm. it is that digest off the thing. It definitely does, um, but I, it, I, you, 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 you. I think if you know about Drupal performance and you have your people who know front end performance, you're not really going to see the difference. Maybe, I don't know. A lot of big sites use Omega and they use it like with like Display Suite and all that other stuff. But I saw a couple of questions in the back. Well, the, um, the Drupal 7 uh, theme is, the markup is pretty clean out of the box. Like, you don't necessarily have to sub-theme ever. Um, and so, depending on what your needs and what your site is, it may, it may not be big enough to justify um, using a sub-theme. Like, maybe you're, it's a pretty basic site. Maybe um, you have a design that needs to be pixel perfect, and you don't have any choice over that. Like, if, if, if I prefer to work and we try to prefer to work where we build something that works before we make it pretty, but there's a lot of people who are really convinced that it's got to look pretty, and then we'll figure out everything else, that, you know, afterwards. Um, if you're in that situation, then using Omega is going to be more difficult for you, probably. Um, so, you know, it... Most of our seven sites are using Omega. Um, but I don't think you should ever say that it, it's the answer for everything. Yeah. Go ahead. You mentioned that you're not going to use uh you don't recommend to um ask uh a digital Yeah. But um Omega uses the nine sixty one system, so um there are a few classes that you can use to get past that um you know use Right. 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 So what what he was saying is that um, you know I said you shouldn't use grid inside a grid, but um, Omega also has these alpha and omega things that help you. I don't ever use them, so I I'm, I'm not, I don't remember the logic. But you can you can use a grid inside a grid, but you just have to um, declare that second class and so that it knows what to do with it. Um, any other questions or comments? Yay! Now I can enjoy the camp. No. <laughs> Thanks. I want to say you were a revelation because I spent months and years.